self-image, all right? If your goals are greater than your self-image, you have to augment your self-image. We win the inner game not by just thinking about the inner game. We win the inner game by deliberately choosing the beliefs, the self-image, the habits. So I'm doing a session on winning the inner game of business. And my, my first question for you um, is this, do you think it's important to win the inner game of business? Is it important to win the inner game of business? If you wanna grow a successful company, do you think it is critical to win the inner game of business? All right, my, I had a little technical difficulty, but uh, now if you can hear me and see me on Instagram, let me know. I'm streaming, by the way, for those of you who have a business, uh, a really good tool is StreamYard to, um, to be able to stream on multiple platforms. So I'm gonna cover um, three sh things that you need to really shape in order to grow a business. If you have a business, let me know what kind of business it is and where you are from. All right. So uh, as many of you know, I, I work with thousands of business owners, training them on how to scale their business. And that's from startups all the way through to billion dollar companies. Um, and one of the things that keeps coming, uh, coming up over and over and over again is the importance of having your own inner game right. Right. And so what is the inner game? of business like what is the inner game so maybe you can type in the chat what is the inner game is it just about attitude like what is the inner game right so what is the inner game you know a lot of times we we talk about the inner game as it's some kind of a mystical thing um, but we, we know that our you know our mindset's important we know that there are two types of mindsets right one is a growth mindset and a growth mindset is the type of mindset where you're always looking to grow and develop and find out how you can versus a fixed mindset saying you know this is how things are therefore you know here is what i can do or can't do so is the inner game important in building your business, right? So, so think about the inner game um, as a, 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 a compilation or comprised of your focus, your attention, your beliefs, your habits, your paradigms, right? Your beliefs, your habits, your paradigms. What about emotional control? Is emotional control part of your inner game? If you don't have the ability to control your emotions while you are building a business, do you think that you will be a victim of circumstances or will you control the circumstances? When you start out to grow your business or you reach 50,000 or 100,000 or 250,000 or a million, what really gets in the way of business owners growing their business? What really gets in the way? Is it because they're lacking the knowledge and skill that they don't know how to get to the next level, right? Is it that they don't believe in themselves? So they limit their success? Is it that they have disempowering habits? Is it that they don't feel they are worthy of achieving their goals? Does self-worth have anything to do with how much you will grow your business, right? Do you think self-worth has anything to do with how big your business will grow? Do you think you will ever grow a business that is bigger than your own self-image and self-worth, right? Think about this. I'm talking about the inner game, right? If you have a goal of whether it's hitting 50,000 or 100,000 or 250,000 or a million or 10 million, do you think you will ever reach those levels if your self-image, self-worth and self-esteem is smaller than your vision? No way, no way, because even if or when you achieve the success, you will sabotage it. Why? 
pay close attention to one of the key responsibilities of your brain. Do you like this, by the way? Pay close attention to what I'm going to show you about your brain. It is a self-regulating, self-regulating organism that makes sure, pay close attention, that your outside world of results, the number of clients you have, the amount of money you make, the amount of money you keep, matches 100%. Your outside results must match 100% your hidden self image of yourself. And in this particular case, your financial set points that you have of what you believe you deserve, right? So if your goals for your business, all right, are greater than your self image, all right? If your goals are greater than your self image, you have to augment your self image, all right? So when we're talking about the inner game, all right, are you, we're talking about the inner game. We have to make sure that whatever goals that we have, okay, let's say your goals are up here for your business. We have to make sure that A, we have the beliefs that it's possible, all right, it's possible to achieve those goals. That means we have to make sure that our conscious and subconscious beliefs um, so we have to make sure that our beliefs match our vision. We have to make sure that our self-image matches the vision that we want. We have to make sure that our habits match the vision that we want. And we have to make sure that we take consistent, inspired answers every single day. So when we're talking about self-image, self-worth, self-esteem, beliefs, habits, what we want to do is plan a little bit every day to create winning the inner game, right? And we win the inner game not by just thinking about the inner game. We win the inner game by deliberately choosing the beliefs, the self-image, the habits that we need to implement every single day. When I was um, very, very early on in, uh, in business, when I got into real estate, uh, 40 years ago, and I've been out of real estate now for many, many years. But when I got into real estate, uh, every day, in addition to looking at my goals for how much I wanted to achieve, how many people I wanted to um, um, uh, help, uh, et cetera, what I would do is I would sit at my desk every day and I would see myself achieving the goals that I wanted to achieve. I would read out affirmations, all right, of exactly what I needed to believe in order to believe that. Does that make sense? I would write out what habits that I need to develop and reinforce in order to achieve the vision, the goals that I wanted. So every day I invested a little bit of time on my inner game. We're just behaving in ways that we learn from our parents, our teachers, our school, our friends, our family. And we develop these neural patterns that became part of our identity and our character. And we develop the stories, the reasons, the excuses, and the proper behaviors to achieve what it is that we wanted to achieve. So every day I used to invest just a few minutes, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day to create the inner game of success around my business. And I was 19 when I started this. Does this make sense? If you like this, give me a like or a love. Because if you don't win the inner game, you're never gonna win the outer game. So even when you know what to do, even if you know how to do it, if you don't know how to win the inner game, then guess what's going to happen? You may achieve some success, but then you will sabotage your success and you'll keep getting stuck. Where in your brain is your self-image, right? And the answer is it's in every cell. And here's a question for you. Uh, were you born with a self-image? Were you born with a self-image? I think you'll agree, no, you weren't born with a self-image. Were you born with any 
beliefs? Were you born with any habits? Were you born with any fears? Were you born with any ideas about anything? The answer is no. So you developed, right? You developed a self-image. You developed self-worth. You developed self-esteem. And in some cases, your self-image is disempowering you. Your self-image is destructive. Your self-image is limiting you. So how could you, let's see if we can get some audience participation, right? How could you, okay, based on the latest neuroscience, develop a more improved, upgraded, better self-image? If your brain is made up of 100 trillion brains, 100 billion brain cells, and those brain cells based on neuroplasticity are creating new connections, right? Your brain is connect, creating new connections based on neuroplasticity, your brain's plastic ability to create new connections. How can you upgrade to a new improved self-image? Can anybody guess? Could you visualize an upgraded, augmented self-image? Is it possible that visualization, all right, is it possible that visualization is simulation? Is it possible that visualization is simulation? And is it possible that visualization activates neurons in the brain that wire together? And if you repeat that wiring, those neurons that become stronger override the neural networks or patterns that have been strong in the past. So we can use affirmations to do that. We can use visualization to do that. Can we use a form of visualization called mental contrasting where we see and feel our old self-image and we create a new self-image that we want? Well, what if we wrote out a new self-image that we wanted? What if we wrote out affirmations that we wanted for that? What if we started to visualize a new self-image? What if we created three behaviors a day that if we took those actions, we would start to enforce or reinforce a new pattern based on how the brain works? This is how you win the inner game. You don't allow the inner game, all right, that um, is uh, your habits right now to control you. You use mindfulness to be aware and that awareness is what gives you choice and choice is what gives you the freedom that you want. But you have to deliberately choose what it is that you want. And then you have to override. Think about this. Um, do you upgrade your cell phone software? Do you upgrade your computer software? Of course you do. Well, what about upgrading your brain software, right? If your brain, all right, created these neural networks, patterns that got reinforced, and let's say that's your brain software, why not deliberately and consciously evolve yourself now, all right? There isn't one part of the brain that's responsible for the inner game. Inner game. The brain is an organism that works together, multiple processing networks and circuits that work together. However, when we're talking about what part of the brain controls most of your life, it's the subconscious part of your brain. It's the part of your brain that is right now all right, the part of your brain that is right now digesting your food, creating new, uh, uh, new nails, uh, uh, making your hair grow. It's the part of your brain that runs automatically without your thinking. So when you think about 3% of our brain is used for conscious decision making, but 97% of our brain is used for automatic processing and to activate the behaviors that match our beliefs, to activate the behaviors that line up with our self-image, to activate the behaviors that are ingrained in the habitual part of our brain called the striatum, all right, and the hippocampus, which is connected together with, uh, which is our part of our memory center. So we are operating automatically as part of our brain's third hierarchy to conserve energy.
So let's shift to just a moment. And I want you to um, ask yourself this question. If you're a business owner, is it a benefit? Is it, an, is it having the edge if you also understand how to activate a prospect or a buyer's decision-making part of their brain? Do you think if you learned how to make your message, your product, your service, your offer stand out so that prospects, people who haven't bought your product or service yet, do you think it is beneficial to understanding which part of their brain should you activate so that they first pay attention to you? Think about this for just a moment. I want to get you um, to think like a marketer and somebody who understands selling. And selling is doing something for somebody, not to somebody. Do you think it's important when somebody is having, you and me and everybody else, having 50,000 thoughts a day, plus how many messages do you think that we hear and listen to every single day, whether it's on social media, radio, television, billboards, how many messages do you think we hear a day? Do you think we, we see hundreds of messages a day? If you think it's hundreds or thousands, let me know, right? Um, do you think it's possible that everybody is overwhelmed with messages? right? Everybody's got so many messages, right? That, that everybody's trying to reach them. And especially since, you know, the world has been on quarantine, the amount of messages that people are seeing, right, uh, is huge. And so people have become numb to messages, right? Why? Because our brain deletes and distorts anything that isn't critical for our attention right now. Our attention units, okay, which we call it, are being taxied or taxed, excuse me. Um, and we have to understand how to create messages so that people pay attention to us. Okay, we have got attention blindness, it's called. Attention blindness. And we basically just stop watching stuff. We just stop listening to stuff. We scroll, 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 click, 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 only when something really stands out. So what are we learning in the world of neuroscience, all right, and in the world of neuropsychology around marketing and selling? Let's, let's get it to marketing and selling, right? But I want you to uh, think about this for a moment. Let's say you have a problem that you are trying to solve. It could be a health problem, a financial problem, relationship problem, career problem, a business problem that you are trying to solve. And that problem is consuming some of your mind and some of your emotions, which means that you are consuming, you know, your brain power to try and solve this problem, right? Now, what do we know about the human brain? I'm going to ask you a question. Type in the answer. What do you think we do more about? Do we do more about moving away from or solving a problem or a pain that we have? Or do we do more to gain pleasure? Which one? Right? Which one? Do we do more to avoid pain or do we do more to gain pleasure? And type in your, your answer for me so I can see the answers. Right? So do we do more to avoid pain or do we do more to gain pleasure? Biologically, neurologically, our brain is seeking for things, whether it's online or offline, the newspaper, on TV, we do more to avoid pain than we do to gain pleasure, which means that if you're doing any type of marketing, would it make any sense to understand 
whatever it is that your product or service is, would it make any sense to understand who is this product really going to help and what is the biggest pain that they are experiencing right now that my product, my program, my service can help them avoid or get rid of. So one of the things, right, one of the things to consider in your marketing, in the positioning of your product or service on your website, on landing pages, on videos, on wherever you want, is to understand the psychology of the brain's decision-making process. And if we do more to avoid pain than we do to gain pleasure, it makes sense, at least for some of your marketing, to know what is it that your product or service helps your ideal clients move away from or eliminate that may be causing them any pain or discomfort. When you think in those terms, it's not that you shouldn't have marketing that moves people towards what they want, but from a purely neurological perspective, neuromarketing, people will do more to avoid the pain that they're in or the discomfort they're in than they will to gain the pleasure. So make sure some of your marketing understands what is it that they're moving towards. So here's a simple little exercise. My product or service helps people, okay, move away from, eliminate, get rid of, make sure it doesn't happen and write down all of the things that your product or service will help people do. Does that make sense? When we're talking about marketing, marketing is getting people's attention first, right? When we have 50, 100,000, you know, thoughts, 50,000 thoughts a day, plus thousands of messages a day, you want to be able to clear through the clutter and the noise. And if somebody is thinking and feeling, okay, shitty, somebody is experiencing pain or discomfort that is real or that they're imagining might happen, when you create a message that resonates with that at the mental and emotional level, you are going to be able to activate a deeper part of their brain that is there to solve their own problems. That makes sense. That's some neuromarketing and neuro sales. So not only do you have to win your own inner game, there's an entire process of winning the inner game of how your prospects make a decision to buy. There's an inner game of how to market properly, both avoidance of you know, pain or discomfort, but also to moving towards. But you have to do it in a proper sequence. And if you're in the right sequence, then you are going to be able to get more people to pay attention to you. When you have a business, you have to understand that your marketing determines whether people will pay attention to you. And you could be marketing even at an event, even on Zoom, if you're talking to people, right? And so all of your communication, your headlines, uh, your sales process, the way that you present your product or service, when you do it in a way that people are activated at the deeper limbic part of their brain, and then they justify it logically, your marketing starts to work where you can actually generate two or three or four times more leads. You can give people the information that they need based on how their brain processes information, and then you can create the opportunity for them to buy your product or service the way that it makes sense for them. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to you? I'm giving you, um, um, you know, some of the things that I've learned in building over, you know, five multi-million dollar companies, billions in sales um, over the years, and also helping over ten thousand business owners. Most business owners are, um, you know, they're trying to solve the Rubik's cube not understanding that there is an algorithm, you know, to solve the Rubik's cube. You don't just sit there and try to figure it out. You learn the algorithm 
and then it becomes easier. Does that make sense? So here's a question that I want to uh, ask every one of you if you have a business. Are there people who need your product or service? Are there people who need it? And are there people who want it right now? And if the answer is yes, then isn't it your job to get your message, whether it's face-to-face, -face, on the phone, uh, at events, when you can go to events, on Zoom, um, whether it's spending $10 you know, every other day on a Facebook ad or Instagram ad or YouTube ad, um, isn't it your responsibility to get in front of prospects, right? There's a formula that is a really easy formula to understand. And here's the formula, ready? Somebody type it in. Maybe every one of you type this in. Traffic times conversion equals revenue. Traffic times conversion equals revenue. And let me share with you what that means. If you can get enough people to look at your product or service, whether it's through marketing or your selling process, and you can sell, get people to buy it, that's going to equal revenue, right? So do you think it might make sense as a business owner that somebody, somebody has to wake up every day asking how am I going to generate more leads today, more prospects today? Would you agree that's one of the indicators of whether your business will succeed or not? Is it possible that if you don't focus on leads, you can't be expecting revenue? So traffic or leads times your ability to convert those leads, to get them to say yes to your product or service is one of the things you or somebody on your team has to think about every single day. Now, if you're not doing it, who is? And if nobody's doing it, you're going out of business or you're going to be very, very limited in your income. So one of the mindset pieces is to come up with how am I generating leads today? Now, here's another thing that I want you to do. Take this equation, all right? And I've only got time for one more question after this. So take this equation. How much money do you want to make? Can you type in how much money you want to make into the chat? I'm going to show you a little exercise that every one of you should do, and you should know the answer to this. Type in how much money you want to make. How many sales must you make? So let's say you want to sell $100,000. You want to make $100,000. Do you know how many sales you need to make in order to reach $100,000? Do you know how many sales you need to make of your product or service? Do you know that answer off the top of your head? If you know that answer on the top of your head, you're in the top 1% of business owners that, no, that knows his or her numbers. If you don't know how many sales you need to make, okay, then when would now be a good time to know how many sales do you need to make? Now I'm gonna take you to one more equation. So you have the number that you wanna make, that's your end result. You know the number of sales you need to make, okay? How many prospects do you need to see your product or service to sell the number of sales that you need to have, right? Business is math. And if you don't understand, okay, and you need to make 100 sales because you're selling a product for $1,000, okay, then how many leads or prospects do you need to be in front of online or offline to make those 100 sales? Great. So Cheryl says you need 1,000 extra leads a month. Cheryl, you better get busy figuring out how you're going to get a thousand extra leads a month, right? Now, if you're not thinking like this, that's the mindset that you have to have in order to achieve your business goals. And if you don't do that, then you are using the drug of choice to build your business. Can you um, 
Tell me what the drug of choice is to build your business. And this is a little bit of a joke. The drug of choice is hopium, right? Hopium, I hope and pray that I make that amount of money. Hope is not a good strategy for business growth. Have an awesome day. I appreciate you. And thanks for sharing this. Hey, this is John. And if you liked that video, watch the next video because it is packed with things that you can do right now to achieve success way faster than ever before.